Hello guys, this is Paul McCorder from TopTechBoy.com and we are here today with lesson number 38 in our new, our improved, our legendary Arduino tutorial series. <clears throat> what we're going to learn today is we're going to learn how to incorporate a tilt switch into a DC motor controller where if you have something like a fan and it tilts over, you can cut the motor off without injuring someone or starting a fire or damaging equipment. So this is a follow on to lesson number 37, which we showed you how to hook up a DC motor controller. And today we will put, be putting the most excellent tilt switch on it. So I need you to pour yourself a large, tall mug of iced coffee. I need you to get out your most excellent eLego Super Starter Kit. What? You don't have one? Look in the description down below. We have a link that will hook you up. 35 bucks, you get a boatload of components. And then as we go through these lessons, you're using exactly the same hardware I am, which might make it a little bit easier if you are just learning. Okay. I also need you to go back and do Lesson 37 if you haven't done Lesson 37 yet, because Lesson 37 really has the first part of this project. Let me get out of your way. And for that, we use the uh, Arduino. We use the power supply from the kit. We use the L. 293D motor controller, and we use the little motor with the fan, and we got it all hooked up and working. If you want the code and the bond out diagram for that, you can go to the most excellent toptechboy.com website, and then when you go to this website, you can look for Arduino tutorial number 37. And on this, we have kind of a picture of what we hooked up. We've got the video describing how we hooked it up. We have the uh, connection diagram, the schematic of how we hooked it up, and then we have the code that we used. And so you can go there and get caught up uh, with where we are, either just read this or watch the video. But today we will, in fact, be moving on. And what we need to do is we need to have all those things up and running, and then we need to incorporate this tilt switch. The tilt switch is in your eLego kit. Let me get it where you can see it there. Uh, the, the tilt switch is in your eLego kit. And so I'm going to put it over here out of the way at about column 50 for the left pin. And what do I need to do? I need to take column 50 and I need to go to a control pin. I'm going to use pin number two as my control pin. And then I need to ground the other leg. So the left leg, my left leg on the tilt switch is connected to the left pin. Uh, the left pin of the tilt switch is connected to pin two on the Arduino. And then the right pin of the tilt switch is going to be connected to our ground rail down here. And in lesson number 37, we showed you how to hook up that ground rail, but we hook it to that ground rail. And then I kind of messed that up when I stopped it. I was trying in the last lesson to see how slow we could run it. So we have it on a super slow, barely running level. Okay, so let's go over to our coding view. In our coding view, let me find a suitable window. Oh, that looks like a very nice window. And the code that I have up here in this window <clears throat> is the code that we finished with in lesson number 37. And so you can go back and you can get this off of the lesson 37 on the website, or you can go back and watch video tutorial lesson number 37. But we're going to continue here. You can see in the old video, in the old program, we had a speed pin, which was pin 5, that controls the speed of the motor. We had two direction pins, dir 1, which was pin 4, dir 2, which was pin 3. And we set a motor speed of 90 because we're trying to run it really, really slow. And now today we are going to have another pin. And so we are going to have another thing that we need to declare. And this was going to be tilt pin, and we put tilt, tilt pin where? At 2. So tilt pin is going to be pin 2. If we have another pin, we need to do another pin mode, and so this is going to be pin mode, and this is going to... Did you guys do your homework 
let me know if you did your homework. And then let me know, did you do it the way I'm doing it or did you do it a different way? Did anybody actually do the homework or are you guys just copying me? What's wrong with copying me? At some point, I'm not going to be here forever. At some point, someone's going to need to know how to actually do this. So pin mode, the pin that we ordered was uh, uh, added was tilt pin. And so we come down to our pin modes and put tilt pin. And it is an output. All right. And we got our pin mode done. Okay, so here I'm going to take this. Uh, I'll just leave this like this. What this was the analog speed uh, of 255. It's hard to start these things at slow speed. So I give it a little kick to get it going. And then if I give it a little kit, kick, it will run slow like at the 90 uh, at the 90 level which we put in there and 90 is a pulse width modulation level that you're putting in go back and watch the earlier video if you don't understand that okay so what do we want to do I am going to take that out in fact so let's take that analog right of speed pin 255 that's the kick let's take it out let's take this delay out as well and it becomes a little clearer you're just setting the direction with dir1 low and dir2 high if you want to go the other direction put dir1 high and dir2 low and it will switch the direction and now we probably need to put a higher speed so that it can start by itself so we'll put a speed of 100 now we're kind of back to just the nominal setup now what we need to do is we need to read the position or we need to come up here okay uh, this tilt pin actually we're reading from it that was a mistake it is an input we are reading from the tilt pin and then what we want is this is a simple switch and I showed you in earlier lessons how you can use a simple switch by using an internal pull-up resistor on pin 2 and the way you do that is you set the pin 2 or the tilt pin to an input and then you do a digital right to tilt pin and you do a high so this is kind of tricky you're saying the pin is an input but then you write to it but what that does is it puts a pull-up resistor between the high and the pin and then what that means is if you hook this switch to it if the switch is closed then you're going to see ground. If the switch is open, you're going to see high. So when it's just sitting there, you're going to be reading a zero when the switch is closed, as in this position here. If that doesn't make sense, go back and watch the earlier lessons. But in summary, the trick is to do a pin mode of that pin as an input and then set it high. And now we have the pull-up resistor in line with it. Now what we need is we need a value to read into. So we'll say tilt val. And we're not going to put a value in it because we will read that. And then we come down here and we say tilt val is equal to analog read of what? tilt pin okay if you are in the upright position you should read a one if you're in the tilted over position you should read a zero if you're upright you want the thing to keep running and so what you will say is is that if you are in the upright position if you are in the upright position if tilt val is equal to is equal equal to zero meaning you are in the upright position then what do you want to do well you just can continue to say analog right of speed pin is m, m speed and that's whatever you set above. And since I'm doing it in the if statement, I am not going to put it up there because I'm doing it in the if statement. And then this curly closes that one. Now, what's the other case? If tilt val equal equal one, then what do you want to do? Well, if it's one, it means it's turned over. And then you will do an analog right of speed pin and what do you want to write it you want to write it as a zero you could have also done a digital write low in that case so if it's up you turn it on if it's over you turn it off and then you just continue to loop like that so let's turn this and see what happens also notice 
on the speed, let's go ahead and turn the speed at 255 so we don't mess with this slow start business or <coughs> trying to operate at slow speed. So let's turn this thing on and see what happens. Downloading. Oh, denied. What is wrong here? Why did this go wrong? Oh, we said speed pin and speed pin. What did I do wrong? Used an uppercase. Did you guys catch that? That was part of the problem. The other part of the problem is everyone did not hold their breath. So this time, everyone hold their breath as we download. Oh, oh still doesn't like it. Ah, I did the same thing twice. Okay. Did you yell at me both times? Now, every last one of you hold your breath. That's the problem. Boom. Look at this running full speed on the fan. Look at that. Giddy up. Giddy up. We are running full speed on the fan. But now the real question is what did we want? We wanted if we turn this for it to turn off. Like if this was turning over. Okay. And when we turn over, it does not stop. What did we do wrong? Okay, well, that's good. We'll figure out what's going on. So it doesn't seem to be doing what we wanted it to. It's running full speed or here. So let's see, are we getting a good value on tilt valve? So to know that, let's print tilt valve. So serial.println of tilt valve. And that should show us whether this is behaving as we were expecting it to. So let me download that. Okay, it downloads, and now I need to show you a window where you can see uh, where you can see the output of the serial monitor. And that looks absolutely crazy. Uh, let me call that up and see. 9600, no line ending. Did I start the serial? Oh, look at that. I put an extra zero in there. That's crazy. Wrong baud rate. 9600 was what it was supposed to be. So now let's come over. Okay, so this is interesting. I do a analog right. Oh, 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 did you see this? This should be a digital read. Digital read. I don't know why I put analog read. Digital read, because I want to know, is it on or is it off? And so I will put this again. And now we're reading zero, and we're running full speed. OK, so let's go back over to this view. So we got a zero at full speed, and now I'm going to turn it to tilt it. And look at that. It stops because it turned over. Back upright, it starts again. It turns over again. It stops. Boom! Did you see that? This thing works. We have incorporated a tilt switch into our project. Let's come over here and watch it on this one where I think that you can see both of them if I move it up. So you see, off of that digital read, we're reading zero when it's upright on the tilt switch. And then when I turn it, I'm running into those wires. When I turn it, okay, you see it gets a one. It gets a one when it's turned, and then it turns off. And then it comes back to zero. I need that in there a little bit better. Okay, stops turns on, stops, turns on. Boom! That is working like a charm. Okay, guys, were you able to do that assignment on your own? Is anyone out there doing their homework? Is anyone out there doing their homework? Okay, let me know. All right, this has been a fun little project. Let me go ahead and give you your homework for next week. Your homework for next week is going to be to use this motor controller. <clears throat> Again, we're going to use the motor controller in this basic setup. We're going to take the tilt switch out because we're not going to do that anymore. 
And what I want you to do is get out your most excellent joystick. I want you to get out your joystick, OK? And remember, we have had several lessons on this motor so far, have we not? Have we not had several lessons on this motor? We have had lesson 37, which was controlling a DC motor. And then this has been lesson 38, how to do the tilt switch. Well, in lesson number 39, what I'm going to ask you to do before lesson 39, before you go to it, I want you to incorporate the joystick. OK, if you press the joystick forward, <clears throat> if the joystick is just sitting there, I want the motor to be still. OK, I want the motor to be still if it is just sitting there. All right. But as you move it forward, I want it to go faster and faster in the positive direction. When it's like that, it stops. So this is like fast forward, slow forward, stop, fast, slow to the neutral. But then if you pull it backwards, if you pull it backwards, what I want you to do is run the motor backwards according to speed. So this is going to be faster, and then this is going to be slower, faster, uh, faster, slower, reverse. But I want the speed to be in the ver reverse direction too, so I can go slow reverse, fast reversed, fat, uh, slow forward, fast forward, and smooth over the full range. Key is I said full range. I just don't want it off forward, off backwards. I want speed control in the forward and the backward direction. I will give you a hint. You will have to use an equation. You will have to do your math. OK, you will have to do your math. <coughs> Don't come in and try to do this without doing your math. All right. OK, guys, uh, give me a comment down below. Let me know that you're watching these. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video. Think about subscribing. If you subscribe, make sure you ring that bell so that you'll get notifications on this channel. And then if you like this, share with other people. This has been Paul McWhorter from TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.